Insects live in a primarily chemical world. They rely on cues to find food, locate mates, and decide where to live. It's a whole different sensory universe to them, and it's one that I've been trying to explore. By understanding how insects use specific signals in their day-to-day, -day, we can learn what factors play an important role in their lives and are critical for conservation efforts. My name is Marissa Sandoval, and I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Davis, studying the chemical ecology of orchid bees. Orchid bees are a group of gorgeous neotropical bees, living jewels, that pollinate hundreds of plants throughout the Central and South America region and Southern Florida after accidentally being introduced in the early 2000s. Though the color of the bees is dazzling, what I find even more captivating is their mating biology. Unlike most insects, male orchid bees don't internally synthesize their own pheromones, like through glands, like ants or other common insects that we're familiar with. Instead, male orchid bees will go out to the environment and collect different scents from orchids, hence the namesake, as well as from fungi, rotting wood, and they store all of these different oils in these like specialized pockets in their legs. And in the presence of a female, they'll release this almost like chemical bouquet for her, a perfume bouquet, if you will. And so what makes their mating system really unique is that there's choice on both sides of the equation. Male bees choose what compounds to put into their perfume and female bees choose, oh, who's a good mate, who's not. So in our lab, we're really interested in understanding that dynamic of what makes a good perfume because each species collects a unique perfume blend. And why is a female interested? Is it the perfume complexity? How many compounds are in the perfume? Is it the perfume composition? What are the types of compounds? I hope to do a whole bunch of mating experiments to elucidate this. And that starts with collecting perfume for male bees. So we're putting some of the bait on this little cloth and going to hang it here. And soon enough, the male bees will come. So if you can see, there's a little male. But what's really neat is you can have these tiny little capillaries to extract the perfume from their legs. And you kind of get a history of where they've been recently. Male bees like, at least in Florida, like to visit basil. And they also like, you can smell it in the perfume right when you're extracting it. And also eugenol, so things like eucalyptus. After baiting wild male bees and extracting perfume, we can bring the perfume back to the lab and store it for future experiments. I'm in the process of designing a series of mating assays in these 10 by 10 meter cages we've built at the University of Florida Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. Females will be able to choose between a male that has the main perfume compound inserted in his legs or the accessory, perhaps coincidental, background compounds. Lucky for us, female bees only mate once. So once she's decided which male bee she fancies, we wait until she starts building cells for her offspring in the nest boxes that we've provided. After a couple of weeks, we can genotype her offspring once they grow up from an egg to a larva to a pupa to an adult bee to see which male bee that they're related to. This can give us a sense of whether females hone in on the main perfume compound or females prefer the flair of having complementary accompanying scents. Research like this, based on behavior and motivated by natural history, gives us a glimpse into how these bees interact with their environment and amongst themselves. It even points to the mechanisms that may be responsible on the molecular and physiological level. Every day I spend with the orchid bees, I feel a little bit closer to seeing what a day in the life is like. 